Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome back to episode 120 of Game Programming. So last time we created the exited and entered events and set up a few different things for our buttons and uh, this time we're going to be taking a look at press and release and basically making this action listener actually do something. So whilst we can detect whether or not the mouse is inside the button or not, which is very nice, um, we also want to be able to obviously press the button and we want it to be able to do something. That's the whole point of having buttons. So to do that, we basically need to call these pressed and released events that we made. Okay. And they're not really events. It's just that, um, yeah, they're just actions kind of, um, that we can override. But the idea is what we need to do is in update, this is going to be relatively straightforward and simple. Once we check to make sure that it's inside and whatnot, make sure that it's inside the if statement, obviously, we need to uh, handle press and released inside here. So what we want to do is basically just check to see if the mouse is pressed, right? So if mouse dot get button equals mouse dot, uh, what even is it? It's like mouse events dot button one, I think. I think one would be left button. I'm not even sure. But if that's the case, let's just actually make sure that this is correct. I'll just type in, I'll just print core. Okay, seems to be right. So if this is the case, we need to, we need to do a few things. First of all, if this is the first time that that's kind of happened, then we want to print, um, uh, we, we want to basically register a press event. Okay, but once we release it, we want to register a release event. So this is a bit more complicated because it needs to work well, right? So if we just have a private boolean pressed equals false as well. Um, <clears throat> what you could do is you could set pressed equal to true. Okay, you could also call, uh, what is it? The button listener, I guess. Yeah, button listener dot pressed. So we'll call that set pressed to true. Um, and maybe just only do this if pressed is false. Okay, so you could do something like this. Um, and then I guess if um, if you release it, uh, so if else if this is um, not pressed, so like, I don't know, equals zero, right? So I guess zero, I'm not sure, but what is button one actually? Button one, one, okay, so no button, there is no button. No button, then, um, oh, whoops, what am I doing? Mouse event dot, no button, then we will uh, set pressed equal to false. Um, one thing that actually does need to happen is almost the reverse. So inside is false. So what happens is pressed equals true. This actually has to be, yes, yeah, false. Actually, no, it's correct. Hang on, is it? Yes, if not press, yeah, okay. That is correct. My, I keep doubting myself and I really shouldn't, but you know, Sometimes I, I do that. Okay, so this sounds pretty good. And we can obviously call released here. And I'm actually curious as to see uh, if this works out correctly, because I don't see it happening. That's me again with a doubt. Let's just print out pressed and released. Make sure you put an exclamation mark. It makes it just so much more exciting. All right, let's see. So pressed, released. So release didn't run. Yeah, I expected it not to. So, um, yeah, it, it has, well, let's just get rid of that. That would be why, because of the whole pressed thing. Maybe not. So if it equals no button. So this is more or less if pressed is actually true and we're at no button. So you could call this an else, but this should only happen if pressed is actually true. Okay. Um, now, unfortunately, I'm not 100% convinced that get button returns what we want because 
We didn't set up our mouse to have release events, unfortunately. Um, so, one, negative one. Now, that's because we set it to that. So this is bad. We shouldn't have done this. This is actually bad mouse code. What we should have done is actually said mouse event dot no button because I assumed the button. I don't know why, but I must have thought that um, that no button was negative one, whereas it's one. So I, I must have thought that the left mouse button was was zero, but it was actually one because you can see no button is zero. So there's not just there's no such thing as negative one. Or at least not here. So no button is what we're actually used for. Uh, sorry, no button is actually what we're looking for. So back in UI button, um, we yeah, as you can see, that did work. So if we go back here, press released, press released. Now if we press it here, and exit, okay. Uh, the question is, do we release it? Because you can see that no event runs until we actually release it. So if exit it happens, you know, do we actually release it? That's the question. So we could do something like that. Okay. So for example, you can see and this kind of boils down to how you think button how buttons work, how they should work and all that stuff. So if we like the close button, for example, if we press that, and then move away, you can see that it releases it completely. Okay, but if we move back, it's still pressed. Yeah. So that's that's some pretty that's pretty basic behavior, and that's usually how you want your buttons to probably work. Okay, so in this case, all we need to do is we need to say that uh, if we're inside and we've left the bounds, apart from just exiting, we need to ch check if uh, we need to check to see if we're pressed, and if so, we run the. Um, actually, we might not even need to do that. Hang on, because that actually does call a. Oh, I think this works perfectly. Hang on, buttons are confusing. Give me a minute. Um, I think what we need to do is let's do something different. When we press, so when we release, we'll set. We don't even need need to do that. I don't think. When we press. Let's set the color to something. Yeah, I don't think this will work actually. Let's set the color to. Um, I guess it needs to be a bit darker, doesn't it? I don't know. Um, let's set it to like. Let's set it to red or something. I don't know. I'm out of ideas. So we press it, it goes red. And then you can see if we go back, it's just completely kind of dead. Okay, unlike unlike with this close button, where if we press it, it changes color. We move it away, we go back, and it's still that same color. Okay, so what's happened there is it's kind of said, hey, if you exit um, and the button is pressed, I'm not going to register any events until you release the mouse button. So that's something, again, that, that, that's like a whole other kind of... Um, discipline almost I want to say um, of how you actually want to solve that so I don't know if that's really required for us because that's probably well, let's check our logic real quick so we do that stuff um, so we exit we enter and then we go press again yeah so, okay. So what we need to do is this. We'll make a private boolean called. Um, ugh, I'm not sure what we should call this. We'll call this. Um, we'll call this blocked or something. We'll set it equal to false. So this is what happens. When we press, we set blocked equal to true, right? Um, and when we release, because this is the important part, right? If blocked is true, we need to change that name because it's really horrific. But if it is blocked, we'll set, um, we'll actually perform our action. So we'll do it on release, okay? 
So if our action was set to something like, oh, what do we set it to? So we can test this out now because it's a button pressed, right? Let's get rid of, hmm, I'll leave that in there. So when we press it and release it, you can see that we get the button pressed. Okay, and if we go back and release it, we also get the button pressed. But what we don't get is that back to kind of state. So what we do want to do is we want to kind of call, we want to, we want to almost call pressed again. Um, so we can probably do that without the blocked thing, in fact. It's just that we don't want to, I'm not sure that release does actually get called twice. Oh, see, that's also another problem. But it didn't. Huh, that's weird. I don't know. Oh, I see. Oh, so much, so much confusing functionality. So this press and release only should happen if we actually press the button inside the, the bounds of the button as well. Um, so yeah, fun stuff, buttons. Let's set the color, yeah, okay, that's fine. So blocked equals true, yeah. Blocked never does equal false. What? What is this? Oh my goodness. Something's wrong. Okay, we're back. I don't know what that was. I think that was just Camtasia freaking out. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure what we should do here. Um, I think... So let's just, okay, so rectangle and transform, yeah, if inside, yeah, cycle's true. So if mouse button is one and press is false. Right. Right, so we set press to, yeah, we don't need this blocked thing. Okay. I think we're actually good. Um, we don't need this blocked thing. I was overthinking that. But that's all good. So if we release the mouse button there, it'll be fine. It's just that something, let's just, okay. Let's do something like this. I think instead of button press, we'll do something like system.exit just so we can clearly see when that gets called. So if I press that, release it somewhere else, and then, yeah, that's the problem I was worried about. So when we exit, we're just going to do this, actually. This probably makes a bit more sense as well. If we exit, we're going to set pressed uh, equal to false. Um, this is if we're inside yeah I think so is that even right okay so we can press the button and we can go away and it won't actually close the game but if we press it like that it will okay cool it's so brilliant there's our functionality all implemented uh, let's go back here real quick and uh, get rid of this so um, we'll probably set these colors up properly instead of hard coding them and whatnot. Um, but what we, yeah. There we go. All good in the hood now. So you can see if we take it out and then back in and whatnot, it stays red, just like this would stay kind of, uh, this would stay kind of pale red. Um, and if we let go, it'll close it. So same here. Yeah, and then close it. Cool. So we've got a fully functional button now. Uh, it works much like the Windows API, which is good, probably. Um, the only thing we can do that's a bit weird is click somewhere else, drag in, and it will actually register as pressed. So thus we can release it, which is also a bit weird because we should get it so that the click actually originates in here, okay? So that's going to be a bit fun. Okay, but we've got that and also the color stuff. So I'm going to leave that till next time just because we're out of time. But um, yeah, so we'll cover some more advanced button stuff next time. And also uh, instead of having these colors hard coded here, we'll actually set them up. Because one thing you can do right now is actually customize your own UI button listener. Um, 
and we'll add that as probably, in fact, let's just quickly chuck that in now. So we'll just say public void set, set button listener. We'll take in a UI button listener. And we'll just apply that. And that way you can override these because this is like the default behavior. You can override them and set them to whatever you like. So yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Game Programming. Um, if you did, please hit the like button and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Thank you.